Hello everyone and welcome to a very quick tutorial. So I was asked uh, by some of you to show how I made the procedural foliage in my scenes. And here is an example. So we have uh, in here a specific terrain material which is combined with two different grass types. One is rocks in this yellow layer of the landscape and one is grass on this green layer of the landscape. So if I go, for example, in the grass, you can see here that there is a density field for the grass, so if I put 0, the grass automatically is removed. If I put, for example, 10, is spawned with a lower distribution, I can also just do 1. And every time I change the parameter for this uh, grass type or for the rocks, uh, basically all the grass types belonging to this landscape will be rebuilt. And I will show you very quickly how I made it. So let's make a new scene. So we have an empty level. We just drop a directional light inside, a BP sky sphere. We combine the sky with the sun. Then we just quickly create a landscape. So we go to landscape mode and then we create a very small one because we don't need for this demonstration an extensive one. But before that, first we create a material for this terrain. So we go tutorial terrain and we keep it open. Then we, have, and we combine the terrain with that material and then we can create it. So as you can see, it will be black at the beginning, but it will change soon. So what we do is we create a layer blend. So if we go to landscape, there is layer blend, which basically is a, a way for you to define different layers for your uh, landscape. So like before, I de defined one for the grass that was green and one for the rocks that was yellow. So we do the same, for example, we go here, and we name it grass. And then we go here and we name it rocks. spelled correctly. Then we go here and we basically combine the um, output of these two layers with the base color. So depending on which area of the landscape we are having, this node will tell uh, which of the two textures to show on the material. Let me explain a little better. So if I have, for example, vector parameter, let's call it uh, grass color. And then if I have another one, which is rocks color. If one has, then we combine the first one with the layer of the grass and the second one with the layer of the rocks. If I change the color in here, let's say a green, and let's say a yellow. Initially, I will not see uh, any of them. So if we go to the paint section of the landscape though, we can see that I have now two different layers, which are the ones that I defined here. The first one is layer for the grass and the second one for the rocks. What we want to do is create a non-weighted blended layer for the sake of the uh, demonstration. So we go here, we go to name it tutorial grass layer info. And then what happens is the whole landscape will uh, automatically be filled by the first layer. We create a second one, which we call train uh, tutorial uh, rocks layer info. And nothing happens with the second one. It's because the first one is already occupying the whole landscape. So we want to change that. We clear, clear the layer which means basically now we are able to paint the layer the way, we, the way we want. So we select the grass, for example, and I want here to have an area of the grass, and you can see it turns green, and here an area with rocks, and you can see it turns yellow. And here there will be also in the middle a little mix between rocks and the plants, we will see shortly. So as you can see, that happened because uh, this is the layer grass. So I had in my material the green color. 
here I have the rocks, so if I change this uh, to be grey, for example, more or less, and I save, this automatically will turn grey. And that's the, the effect, it's really, really simple. Uh, we're not going to see in the preview anything because it's not marking any layer. So now the trick is to use another node which is called the landscape uh, sample node, layer sample. And then we create two of them. And then we call the first one with the name of the first layer. So we use grass. The second one with the rocks, which is the second of the, la of the second layer. Then we use the landscape grass output. I will explain you shortly. And then similarly we call these rocks, still respecting the name of the layers, just for clarity. We connect these two nodes here. And basically what we are doing is saying, okay, I have the layer for the grass, I have the layer for the rock. I want this node to spawn a specific grass type uh, along the layer of the grass in the first case and the layer of the rocks in the second case. What is missing is the definition of the spawned object. So this grass type, which is basically a collection of assets that can be spawned in the scene. They can be different flowers or plants or different rocks and uh, uh, dirt assets. So if we go here, we come back to our training material. We go to foliage, landscape grass type. We go to tutorial grass type and we save it then we do the same with another one for the rocks so we do with we name it with rocks then we associate the grass type of grass with the grass layer which is this one and then the second one with the uh, rocks layer which is this one so our terrain material is now ready. Basically, depending on how we configure these two, we will have different spawns on the scene. Let's have a look. So we have here the window for the grass type. So as you can see, uh, sorry, this is the grass layer. My bad. So grass type. I have a list of grass varieties. So I can, I can add an element and select a mesh. Uh, I downloaded for this purpose some plants from the Quixel Mega Scan. So let's say these flowers, for example, and you can see automatically they are spawned just in the green area. It's as simple as that. Then the cool thing is that we can just change the size. So we can do, for example, 10 and we can reduce the amount. So we can just do these flowers and that's it that's pretty much ready so i can just decide for example to paint here more flowers so i do this and suddenly more flowers are appearing there and then to complete the tutorial we do the same for the rocks so here we create a new asset for the collection so i downloaded this specific rock material which is extremely tiny as you, can, as you can see. So let's make it 100 but bigger. And that's the result. So we have these rocks and these plants automatically generated for our landscape, which is extremely useful, especially when you want to make a very large landscape without manually paint everything. And uh, we can also do uh, a variety of them. So if I go to grass type and I add another one we can select for example this type and let's say we have uh, 50 of these of 20 sides and you can see they also appear here and we can do oh sorry this was yeah correct yeah that's for the grass uh, so here we do the same, but with uh, 
actually let's reduce the density of this let's do just five so that we see them more clearly and yeah then you can have fun mixing up assets really quickly uh, obtaining a very realistic result I hope you enjoyed and feel free to subscribe for more or to request your tutorial and I will see what I can do. Thank you.